This flies in the face of any comments that the Republican Party doesn't have diversity. And my three bills, I think, are 300% more than Pete Aguilar's, maybe. Oh. Thank you, Blake. And, and Garrett, you owe me a buck, right? And I'm going to collect on that. Good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for being here tonight. I appreciate the low podium. I wish I had a box to stand on, but I don't. <laughs> this is a great event every year, and I am truly honored to be here as your Republican speaker. But I must admit, I am a little disappointed in the venue. I was under the impression that we were going to be in the Senate Judiciary Room. I understand they're using that for some other filming tonight. Now, now, I want to start off. Listen, I am a live and let live person, so I got, I got, we got to roll with the changes. But I do want to start off by thanking someone very special this evening, right? It was a little serious before I got up here, so I do want to, I, I do want to start the evening thanking somebody very important. He's an Oscar winner, an Emmy winner, a two-time Olympian, and president of the press club. Thank you, George Santos. My, my apologies, he's not here. He, he's filming that cameo with Fetterman. I get it, all right, all right. In, in all seriousness, I do want to thank the press club and the board for inviting me here tonight. It is, a, it is great to share the stage with so many influential people. Um, I, I am disappointed that Tina Smith can't be here. Um, I, I, I appreciate the video. Um, and congratulations to Janet Hook on your Lifetime Achievement Award. Very, very well deserved. Thank you. Um, when I got this invitation, I, I got to be honest with you, I kind of thought it was a prank. I mean, You've had so many remarkable speakers. Tim Scott, Steve Scalise, Joni Ernst. Why on earth would you want a little hillbilly from Romeo, Michigan coming to talk to you? But then I figured it out. Y'all thought my name, my last name was McCain. You thought you were getting some moderate? You didn't realize you were getting some Trump-loving MAGA Republican, right? Well, buckle up. I got 15 minutes, and actually I got more than 15 minutes because my counterpart isn't here tonight. And just like at the southern border, I'm already here, so you're not getting rid of me anytime soon. <laughs> right? Now, just to lay some ground rules, if you could, for the speech tonight, if everyone could, please keep their hands above the table. And I know it's date night from some of you, but no inappropriate touching. That includes you, Lauren Boebert. No vaping either. <laughs> and all the members here, um, we had our last vote tonight, so there's no rush. We are not in a rush. There is no need to pull that fire alarm, Jamal Bowman. We are all good, man. Relax, have a glass of wine, enjoy. Now, I do want to give a warning to the press to the Press Club Foundation. Make sure to count all the gold necklaces, your silverware, and the gold bars, because I hear Bob Menendez is here, and I do know he's got a few legal bills to pay. I'm here all week, folks. Now, for those of you who don't know me, or what I did before Congress, or my background, I did have a business. I started it from scratch. It was a financial services business. We started it. We raised, you know, grew it to 700 people. Right? That's good. When I got elected to Congress, I figured it'd be the same, right? What would be the difference, right? I was in a business. I'm going to go to Congress. I had a, right? If I told my people, turn left, they turn left, right? I'd have a lot of power and a lot of influence, just like in business. Yeah, clearly I was wrong. Clearly I was wrong. But I thought to myself, what do I have to lose? And then my husband reminded me, maybe a half a million dollars, my privacy and my reputation, but other than that, that was all right. 
I do remember, I do remember, I am Italian. Sunday dinner is very important to me. Yeah, I, there's one, there's one day go out in the crowd. Thank you, you and I. But I remember when I began to run for Congress, I thought, you know, I'm gonna run for Congress. But before I do, I know it's a family affair, so I got my family together. It was Sunday dinner. Sunday dinner is very, very important to me, right? Got my family, my four kids together, my mom, my in-laws are there. Everyone's excited. You think we should run? Oh yeah, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. What could go wrong, right? There's one person who thought this was a horrible idea. And this one person is here tonight, and that is my 78-year-old mother. Where are you, Granny? Stand up, stand up. Now, I, I do want to tell you something. Woo! I, I love my mom, but she moved in with me six months ago. She moved in with me for six months 10 years ago, right? God bless my husband. But everybody was excited except my mom. She looked at me and she's like, Oh my God, honey, why would you do this? They're gonna be mean to you. You're not gonna make any money. She's like, are you having problems in your marriage? Be honest with me, <laughs> right? But we did it, and I think you're halfway proud of me now, Mom? Okay, oh. all right, all right, I'm in your good graces. You'll live with me for a little while? Okay, we'll take that. But then I remember I got elected, and I was so excited when I got elected. I'm gonna change the world. And then it hit me, holy shit, what do I do now, right? I don't know what I'm doing. So the best piece of advice Kevin McCarthy gave me, other than not to run for Speaker of the House, <laughs> was do not hire your campaign manager, right? As a freshman, Kevin McCarthy looked me in the eyes and he said, he's like, you have no idea what you're doing. Do not hire your campaign manager you got to hire somebody who knows the business. So I did that. Even though he didn't come to my house on Sunday dinner, we had to go to his friend's house for Sunday dinner, but I hired the best chief of staff I think there is, and that's Nick Kawatma. Stand up, stand up, stand up. I know we can barely see you because you've lost 45 pounds. Now I do know, I do know when you, when you worked in Kennedy's office, Senator Kennedy's office, your hair was black, it's a little bit more salt and pepper now, a little bit more salt than pepper, right? But that's all right, that's all right. He is my fun governor. He is worse than my husband. I call him my work husband, right? And I know, oh my God, you can't say that, you can't say that. He is constantly telling me what I can and can't do. So I'll give you an example. I do have a tendency to swear every once in a while. And he's like, oh my God, Lisa, you can't swear, you can't swear. I'm like, all right. Then I look at Nancy Mace. She, she is like sends more F-bombs than a trucker, and she, we're in a committee here, and she's talking about Hunter Biden not having any balls. And I'm like, seriously, Nick? You're worried about me swearing? Really? And then, and then the best. He's like, you gotta act appropriately in committee hearings. Be on your best behavior. I'm like, okay, all right, it's cool, I'll do that. If you haven't noticed lately, I sit on oversight. I have the pleasure of sitting next to Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert. I mean, I think Jamie Comer loves me, right? I gotta look, I didn't realize this, Marjorie Taylor Greene's sitting right next to me. Act appropriately in committee hearings, Lisa. Be the best you can be. I got lewd pictures of Hunter Biden right next to me. I got Hunter Biden's butt right next to me. And I'm like, cause I'm excited to get on TV cause I'm next to Marjorie Taylor Greene and you're worried about me? I mean, I sit next, right, right next to her. Thanks, Marjorie, I appreciate that butt in my face, but that's all right, <laughs> right? You know, as a member of Congress, people often ask me, what is it like to be a member of Congress? I said, it's simple. You ever remember being back in high school? Just exactly like being back in high school, right? In high school, you had cliques. In Congress, we have caucuses, right? You had the outcast caucus, um, the, out, the outcast click, they had too, um, too many wines maybe. <laughs> the outcasts, right, you know, the weirdos, right, the outcasts in, in high school. We got those same people in Congress, they're called the Freedom Caucus, right? It's no different, same thing, right? We, you have the people that got cut from sports teams, we got those same people that get cut from, 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 the, from the speaker's race. 
you got the know-it-alls, right? These are the most annoying people in high school that I remember, right? They're the nerds, right? They have every answer to every question. We got those same people here. They're called the press corps, <laughs> right? They're here, right? I mean, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Republicans love the press, maybe 1% of the time. I mean, regardless, I know that all the journalists here tonight have said they're so tired of covering our chaos, right? The long nights, right? I'm here to tell you all, I'm not buying that for one minute. Not one minute. I think you guys secretly vote Republican each and every time. <laughs> Even you guys from CNN. I mean, my God. We make it so easy for you to do your job. I, I, I don't think for a second, right? Republicans give you everything you need. You need a weird story to cover? Here's George Santos running down the halls with a baby, right? I mean, George, you guys miss George, you don't you? Give it up for George. We all miss George, right? You need, you need some comedy? Jamie Comer calling people Smurfs in his committee. My favorite, you need, you need a little physical drama, get a little rough and tough. You got Mike, Ro you got Mike Rogers um, decapitating Matt Gates on the floor, right? Who, whoever saw that? I mean, this is normal stuff, right? It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's unbelievable the amount of work we do to make your lives easier. And sometimes I literally think we are writing the stories for you. I mean, how else would Olivia Beavers, where are you, Olivia? <laughs> yeah. How else would you write the stories so fast? I mean, girl, it's almost like you're listening to our phone calls, <laughs> right? Now, Punchbowl, I don't know how, but you guys must be getting our meeting notes too because there are timestamps on everything. That's odd. And the good folks at News Nation, well, I give you an A for effort, right? I mean, I do love you. I do love you. I'm going to give you that. And you guys have always been good to me. But seriously, Chris Como? I mean, that's as, as an anchor, that's as suspicious as having, as, as having a bag of cocaine at the White House. I mean, seriously, what's next? Alex Jones? Come on. Come on. You guys can do better.